What up though, I'm Merce, Hip Hop DX, and this is The Breakdown. This week is for the culture, y'all, but what the heck does that mean? For the culture, one of the most overused terms in hip hop, let's break it down. I was born in the year 1978, the year Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight was released, the year when hip hop really began its mainstream journey. So I, like a lot of y'all out there, was born into hip hop culture. Never, thank God, knowing life without it. But this doesn't make me the sole expert. I am not a certified cultural anthropologist. However, I do consider myself a hip hop scholar, and these are my theories. In this episode, we get into cultures where I'm not an authority, so forgive me if I misspeak. But overall, I feel my opinion is still sound and well-researched. And speaking of that research, let's get back to the lecture at hand and hit up dictionary.com for the definition of culture. The arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. The customs, arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or other social group. So what is hip hop culture? As we've discussed in weeks prior, the general consensus is that it's comprised of four elements, b-boying, emceeing, DJing, and graffiti. And going off of the aforementioned definition, I feel we meet the criteria to be considered a culture. But hip hop culture itself is influenced by or has taken from a few other cultures. The most direct influences being African-American or black culture, Afro-Caribbean culture, and American street culture. Let's begin with African-American culture. We are a group of people brought here against our will to be slaves stripped of our original African names, heritage, etc. Forced to conjure a new identity from pieces of our new world and pieces of what we could remember from our past world. This mashup gave birth to different ways to cook, different forms of dance, and of course, different forms of music. Gospel, the blues, jazz, rock and roll, and funk. All of these elements of African-American culture are a blend of European, Native American, and African culture. But the overarching theme of it all, and to me the true spirit of black culture, is turning the negative into a positive. And that spirit is what led to the creation of hip hop culture in the mid 70s in New York City. African-American and Latino kids going through poverty and oppression used the crude resources at their disposal to create an art form that would ultimately change their circumstances. Subway trains became easels. Every wall became a canvas. Neighborhoods became something like museums. White, black, and Latino kids bombing cities at night. This element of the culture can't really be attributed to one influence. Most cultures' visual art has its roots in cave drawings or the decorated walls in their places of worship. Discarded linoleum and cardboard became dance floors. And b-boying definitely took from African, African-American, and Afro-Latino dance. To me, the Puerto Rican, Cuban, and Dominican influence is super apparent, especially in the top rock. We just took it and flipped it. Now, the musical influence came from another part of the Caribbean, which brings us to Cool Herc. We all know Cool Herc used to DJ parties on Sedgwick. He had two turntables, a microphone, and two stacks of speakers. He would go back and forth and spin breaks of disco and funk records. But where did he get this idea? Was it a vision from the hip hop gods? No. Herc was an immigrant from Jamaica, and in Jamaica, they had been rocking parties on larger versions of the setups he had for many, many years. They were called sound systems, and Herc grew up watching people like King Tubby, U Roy, and the Jack Ruby sound system rock crowds in the ghetto, something like this. <laughs> Now let us talk about the MC. As you saw in the previous clip, at first the MC was just a guy doing ad libs and little rhymes here and there to keep everything lit. And as the culture evolved, the MC began to take center stage. But people rhyming isn't solely a hip hop thing. Rappers are poets essentially, and poetry has been a part of every civilization on earth for eons. As far as hip hop is concerned, I think the most direct influence comes from West Africa, where of course most of our ancestors were stolen from. These were the poets slash storytellers slash musicians who were called many things depending on the region, but they are currently and commonly known as griots. Their compositions would contain anything from satire and gossip to political commentary and history. They were the repository of oral tradition, a walking almanac or Wikipedia for lack of better term. Side note, shout out to West Coast Legends Freestyle Fellowship who introduced me to the word on their classic LP, Inner City Griots. And back to the Griots, the West African people were captured and sold into slavery across the Atlantic. 
but the spirit of those poets still endured, and it was manifested in the form of slave hymns, the blues, and jazz. Jazz singers definitely influenced rap with their rhythmic and fast-paced scatting. Legends like Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, and the great Cab Calloway, who was not only known for his scatting, but also his call and response, which will go on to become a staple for live hip-hop performers everywhere. Peep. Now, y'all see where somebody say ho, and all that shit came from? <laughs> from there, there were the beat poets, which led to the 60s and 70s with acts like Gil Scott Heron, The Last Poets, and The Watts Prophets, whom many rightfully consider some of the first rappers. But where those artists were very political, the 80s gave birth to hardcore street poets. Street culture from day one influenced how rappers dressed, spoke, and spent their cash. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five kicked it off with the cautionary tale, The Message, about avoiding the pitfalls of street life. But soon after that, Spoonie G, Ice-T, and Eazy-E began making songs about diving headfirst into those very same streets. Some of these kids were actual thugs. Some just told what they saw. And by the late 90s, rappers were adapting the personas of real life street legends like Rick Ross or donning the moniker of a street legend they respected like 50 Cent getting his rap pseudonym from the infamous Stick Up Man who went by the same name. Hip hop, like the rest of America, has been in love with the bad guy for quite some time. Whether it be Bloods and Crips or the Gambino family. Rappers rapping about being drug dealers, rappers rapping about being drug users, pimps rap, hoes rap. You take away the street culture influence and I say you lose about 80 to 85% of the rap game. Which brings me to this point. With all these cultures coming together to form hip hop culture, when a rapper says for the culture, what the fuck do they actually mean? Okay, we all agree that the culture is something we're all a part of, so it's bigger than us. Just like you do something for your church, your community, or your team, you're making a contribution to a bigger idea. That implies service, and sometimes, not all the time, sacrifice. And occasionally that service results in glory or personal gain. But that shouldn't matter though, because you're doing it for the culture, right? For the team, not personal gain. But why don't I feel like MCs share that sentiment these days when they say, I'm doing it for the culture? Let's check out Ho when he says it on his single, Izzo. I do this for my culture. Here we go. What culture is that? Jay-Z is a black American. It could be that culture. We know his background, so it could be street culture. And he has implied on multiple occasions that he is a hustler, not a rapper. But I think that with this line, he's actually referring to hip hop culture. Since earlier in the song, he says he's overcharging the industry for what they did to the Cold Crush Brothers. However, what is he actually doing for the culture? Riding in a roadster? Does driving a luxury car really imply service? Is it adding to hip hop's legacy? Is the culture advancing because Sean Corey Carter has a new Porsche? Or is it personal glory? Yes. Not completely altruistic, but seeing someone use the art to advance themselves socioeconomically does inspire other hip hoppers to go out and pursue their dreams. And yes, rappers have been doing that before, but Jay-Z and Dame Dash were part of the first generation of independent hustlers slash rappers the public got to see say fuck the industry and still see long-term mainstream success on their own terms. It's hard to see now, but you gotta remember, these majors weren't fucking with Jay-Z at all at the beginning of his career. But let's move on to a new example and how a new kid on the block, Kevin Abstract of Brock Hampton says it. I do the most for the culture, nigga, by just existing. Delete my tweets because I'm ashamed of being a fucking Simpson. I told my mama I was gay, why the fuck she ain't listen? Although Brock Hampton is a self-proclaimed boy band, when he says he does the most for the culture, I don't think Kev's talking about pop culture. And even though he's a young cat and bitter old heads think no youngsters give a fuck about hip hop, I think he is saying he's proud to be pushing hip hop culture forward by being one of the most successful openly gay rappers the culture has ever seen. Is it a personal sacrifice? Yes. Is there glory in it? That's up for discussion. I feel like for every high five he gets, there's 10 more homophobic slurs he has to deal with. To me, he's a hip hop pioneer in the making and one of the young cats that actually get it from this generation. So I salute him. Now, let's move on to the next example. Let's be clear. Ciroc is for the culture. What? 
what culture is this for? Party culture? Celebrity culture? I see hip hop personas, but nothing else screams hip hop in the ad. Not even the beat. But wait, there's Diddy. And Diddy himself has done so much for hip hop culture. Like it or not, he is a hip hop icon and pioneer. So doesn't that mean everywhere he goes, the culture goes with him? That vodka money helped establish Revolt TV, which in my opinion, we all need to watch more of. It's the only network owned and operated by the culture, where artists from underground dudes like myself to mainstream divas like Nicki Minaj can get airplay. They also host the Revolt Music Conference, which gives up and coming artists a chance to learn and network. So by proxy, isn't Ciroc for the culture? I gotta say hell yeah. Now, if you thought that was a stretch, Buckle up, because we are about to get into the most egregious misuse of the word culture, Migos. Let's look at the artwork for their album, Culture. Where is the culture? I see an explosion, and out of it coming a Capitol building, a sports car, white roses, a freeway sign, some Asian-y pagoda thingy. So I ask again, and I'll be more specific. Where is the hip hop culture? You might say, well, Merce, they aren't talking about hip hop culture. They're talking about black culture or street culture, or trap culture, if that's even the thing. And to that I say wrong. Hell, I thought that too, and I had been giving them a pass based on the assumption that they meant another culture. Then I started doing my research for this week, and oh boy, look what I found them saying in a Fader interview. The new album title is about the culture of hip hop music, Offset said. It's time to let the culture be known, it's time to claim it, and it's time to claim that we are the Migos, and for people to understand that this is what we did. We did a lot for music. Migos is the culture, seriously. There are artists that are way bigger than us that get recognition off our flow. Well, where to start? As you may know, I'm a Migos fan, but bruh, they are influencing an era that does not make them the culture. They are merely part of the culture, just like the rest of us. Yes, by far they have led this new generation, kings of this era, but kings of the culture they are not. Could they be? Sure. But they obviously have no knowledge of actual hip hop culture or the textbook definition. It's bigger than the music. As KRS once said, rap is something you do, hip hop is something you live. Had they or someone in their camp had the knowledge of the four elements, they could have easily broke down the meaning of the album like this. They could have said, we rap, boom, that's one element. We milli rock, we pipe it up, whatever, that's a dance, that's two elements. I've been to Amigo show, they do have a DJ. He's up there doing the bare minimum, but hey, technically, that's a third element. Four, graffiti, visual representation. They could have said, what we do with our colorful fancy clothes and custom jewelry, that's graffiti. Bing bong bing, I would have had to respect that. Maybe not agree, but that would have meant at least they had a knowledge of the culture they were exploiting. But no, here's the Culture 2 album cover. Yes, you get it. Still, no culture. When you're a rapper and you say the word culture, from now on, I say it needs to mean hip hop culture. That's not too much to ask, right? If you cooked me a pizza and said, here, this is a representation of my culture, I'd assume you meant Italian culture. You're doing it for the streets, then say that. You're doing it for your people or the movement, then say that. But when you are rapping and you say for the culture, you have to mean hip hop culture. And by golly, by now, you should know what the fuck that means. Fuck the lyrics and the name of the pioneers. Just know that there are four elements, four words, that's it. And then we can let you know how you fit in. But we've reached a point where hip hop has become the most popular culture. But hip hop is not pop culture, if that makes sense. Pop culture is subject to the trends, whims, and the opinions of the masses. And after the mainstream moves on from that art form, it dies and it's forgotten. Look at disco. And I, for one, plan on our culture being around for a long time. So we have to be careful. Education is paramount. You don't have to do graffiti or break dance or scratch, but just like I did for Migos, there's a way to make the new school artists make sense within the traditional guidelines. It's not the content that makes them fake hip hop, as some call it. It's their lack of knowledge, which makes some view them as posers. I get it but they obviously want to be a part of the culture. We just need to find the best way to embrace and educate them and others like them. A way of saying, keep doing what you're doing. We're proud of you. We are fans. Here's some history though. And here's where hip hop comes from. We're not asking you to emulate it, just acknowledge it, be aware of it, and keep moving the culture forward like you've been doing. These days, kids take for granted that hip hop is an established culture. 
I remember writing papers and arguing with my teachers to get them to recognize this trend I was obsessed with as a real culture. Now, it's taught in universities as a real culture. Is the term overused? Sure. But that also means that it's familiar, and the fact that hip hop is an actual culture is a widely accepted truth. I like that, and I say it's a good thing. You, you might say hell yeah. You might say fuck no. Let's talk about it in the comments below, and as always, for more music and news, check out hiphopdx.com.